Prometheus as of 2016. Begin at Prometheus.com. The first thing you'll see are some checkboxes next to a brief legal agreement. Check them all and then the green I agree button. At the bottom of the main page, you'll see the names of some of the sources of data that we accept. Click on those names for more specific help. Upload raw data from your computer and then watch the progress bar. Please read this text. While you can upload multiple files at this stage, I want to make it very clear that this is not a way for you to upload all of your family members and get reports for each of them. This is instead a way to upload additional files to get supplemental information in a single report. It can also be useful if you were tested by multiple companies and want to pool that data together. The price for a typical report with one file is $5. With the two additional files you've uploaded, it's now $9. I'll enter some personal information and then proceed. Here, you can modify the email address we will deliver your report to and a nickname for this particular run. And then we wait, typically under five minutes. And then when it's ready, there are two buttons here to view or download. The best choice is instead to simply go to the email address you specified during your payment. If you don't see it immediately, it was sent by reports at prometheus.com. We'll look at view. Here you see your report. It begins with a tutorial. The tutorial walks you through various steps like text search, all of the controls, all of the genotypes, information about links out to Snippedia for the SNP as well as the genotype. Notice the link to orientation. If Prometheus tells you you're a CT, some other source tells you you're an AG. Both sources can be correct, but they're comparing to different versions of a reference genome from different points in time. That link we'll try to explain in more detail. Here's a pie chart showing at any time the breakdown of good, bad, and not set. Buttons for various operations you can do. We'll look at each of these in more detail in a moment. But the tutorial tries to give you a sense of what each of them is capable of doing for you. Having finished the tutorial, I'll begin by typing liver, L-I-V-E-R. And as I do, we go from an awful lot of genotypes to a much smaller collection. In most browsers, pressing Ctrl plus or Ctrl minus will increase the font size until it looks the way it does on small screens like mobile phones, where the controls, instead of being at the right hand side, have been moved to the top of the page and scroll with you along with the genotypes. and see the two names we mentioned for the additional uploads and get a sense of how they work. We'll see them again in just a moment. By zooming back out to regular desktop size, you can see the pie chart in the lower right. You can also see the genotype for Lily Mandel in the upper left and the two others we want to compare to in the right highlighted in that red circle. Clicking on table brings up a new window with a fairly simple display of major attributes that we track. You can change how many are on screen at one time, export to comma separated values, Excel, or PDF. I'm going to click on the PDF here and you can get a sense of what that looks like. This table window does respect all of the filters you previously applied, so in this case we're only looking at liver. If you have everything turned on, this can be very slow. Clicking on categories gives a list of some of the different categories of information as they can be grouped. Clicking on reset gets rid of all the filters. Previously we had the word uh, liver selected 
and it was a smaller list. Now after having it hit reset, you can see a much larger list. By clicking on a category, on the right hand side it's just like having clicked on the pull down menu. Again, green indicates good, red indicates bad. The pie charts give a feel for how many genotypes apply to each of those different categories of information. Scrolling to the top will reset it back to default. References. I've clicked plus once or twice to increase the count. By using the slider and take up to 50 and disabling genosets, I'm looking at only genotypes where at least 50 PubMed papers are mentioned. Clicking on the RS number takes me into Snipedia where we've collected summaries. And with just a few more clicks, I'm looking first at the PubMed in the abstract and then actually at the paper in PubMed. I think it's good to remind you that while your Prometheus report really is about you, there's content in Snipedia and PubMed that are not necessarily specific to you. It's now possible to choose different populations within your Prometheus report. Each time you choose one, the population frequency updates. So for this particular genotype, you can see that it's extremely common in the Aruban African uh, population at 96%. When we choose something like Mexican, the population frequency falls much lower to 20s or 30s. There's an option here to change the color scheme used for good or bad, which can be helpful if you are colorblind. We'll come back to the email that was sent to you before. The reports are only kept online for 45 days, so before that time, probably as soon as the report is delivered to you, you should click download and receive a zip file. Opening up this file is the major source of confusion for Prometheus users, because sometimes you can see something like this. And the reason is that you didn't really unzip the file. Windows made it too easy to get one particular file out of there, but didn't unzip all the others. By clicking on Extract All in Windows, or different methods for different operating systems, you get all of the files really unzipped, and at this point the path doesn't mention the temp directory. Clicking on the link for UI version 2 takes you back to exactly what you saw with the initial link to view.